you moved here. Well, I'm a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm. But in 1970, when I got out of high school, I kind of left the Drifted church. Away. Yeah. For how long? Yeah. At least 10 years. Pagan. And it was, You're a pagan. I'm a pa Well, no, because you have to go to church when you go home. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I went away to LSU. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, when I got married, you get married in the church. Yeah. But then that's it. And then we crept back on being a C and E for a little while. Yeah. Christmas and Easter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then through life's trials, a miscarriage at seven and a half months pregnant. Oh, really? Um, I started coming back to God, and then of course my psycho-Catholic mother <laughs> helped that. Helped I wouldn't know that. any of those. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it was a journey. It was yeah. a journey. So you had you had uh, during that time. How old were you about the time that you started thinking more about the faith? Oh goodness, I guess about twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And when you when you decided to come back in, to hop back in, yeah. um, and you, first time you came back to the church, what were you thinking? Well, first, I uh, gave God, like, an ultimatum, like, if you're there, give me a rush. Let me feel you. Mm -hmm. And he did. I really? was driving in the car, and I felt something. Um, I had done a little marijuana in my <laughs> time off, okay? We're talking the 70s. <laughs> and um, I said, God, if you're really there, give me a rush. Yeah. And he did, and uh, it was like he did some rewiring at that really? point. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So and, but then I slowly came back to the church, so like back of the pew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and Catholics hate the front row. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you, you're driving down the street, and all of a sudden you kind of you get the sense that maybe I need to think more about this. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Yeah. What was um, was that before or was that after your miscarriage? It was after. Yeah. And I had noticed that there must be something to this prayer stuff. Because my mother was in a prayer group. Mm -hmm. And I should have been devastated by having a miscarriage. Yeah. Oh, seven and a half months. And they were twins. Mm -hmm. And I had to have a real delivery and everything. Wow. Um, and I was devastated. But there was a calmness, which sounds weird to say. Yeah. I'm like... Where is this calmness coming from? And then I really connected it to my mother's prayer group, my mother and her prayer mm. group. You know, I think, I, I really believe that, and thank you for sharing that too, thank you for that. I think sometimes there's, you know, there's questions that, that every human being has, right? That we all have. Um, who am I? What am I called to do with my life? And what happens to me after I die, says John Paul II. And I think sometimes when we lose someone that is, is close to us, especially as a mother mm -hmm. losing a child yeah. or two, we, we really ask those questions. I mean, what is kind of these fundamental, they would say existential questions, the meaning of life, or um, what ha am I ever going to see these people again? Yeah. Or um, really, Lord, why would you permit evil? Mm -hmm. Why would you permit this? If you're all loving, if you're so wonderful, if God is love, as John tells us in his epistles, mm -hmm. then why would you permit that? Because right. that doesn't seem very loving right? And to, to human beings. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's interesting because it, it sounds like God was kind of, kind of using some, a difficult situation and some of the own ups and downs, right, mm -hmm. to kind of pull you back. Because one would, I think sometimes when people think about going back to God, unquote, maybe yeah. they think, you know, uh, Paul being knocked off his horse, you know, yeah. light in the sky, mm -hmm. not so much tragedy yes. or difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. So that it sounds like that, in some ways, that kind of helped, right? Your faith it journey. It did. Yeah. It did. And I saw how, how can I be handling this mm -hmm. tragic situation? And then you look around and you're like, well, I'm not the only one having tragic right, situations. Right. And then I was blessed soon after that to get pregnant again and have my daughter, Adrian. Yeah. And I had another miscarriage, another daughter, Jennifer. Yeah. Another miscarriage, and then my twins. Oh, uh, really? No kidding. So, as many That's people so hear me say, I've got four angels in heaven and four angels on earth. Wow. I know. That's incredible. And I know my babies in heaven help yeah. me. And yeah. I know they've helped me raise my four children. 
I tell people all the time, the toughest people I know are mothers. <laughs> I would never, I'd be, I would never, I would be even a neurotic parent, you know, I'd be 2 a.m. worrying all the time. Oh, no. Know. I'm like, give me another ball. Give me another, I can juggle this. Get, bring it on. I can do it. <laughs> mothers were so used to just yeah. last minute and handling everything. Well, I mean, it's, and you always, as a, as a parent, you always have this kind of spiritual umbilical cord with your child. Oh, right? yes. Oh, I mean, yes. even after we lose a child, mm -hmm. you're always connected. As St. Edith Stein, she used to talk so much about this, that the connection between a mother and her child is mm -hmm. spiritual, it's emotional, it's intellectual, it's physical. Mm -hmm. It's this multifaceted dimension, you know, that happens. And I think, to be honest with you, I think it's hard for men to understand that. You know, I mean, I think we have this connection with our child, but we don't carry his child. It's like a nine-month novena that oh, you do. I've never made the nine-month connection. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. Yeah, nine, nine is months. very important. And I, I mean, especially, I think, there's... With the Mother of God mm -hmm. and the Annunciation. And, My birthday. No way, is it? In March? Yes, March 20th. Sign of greatness. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and Gabriel. Love Gabriel. Oh, Angel yeah. Gabriel. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, well, that's incredible, Brenda. And you, so you, then after you, after you came back in the faith, you started working with Curcio. Mm -hmm. and well, it took me a while to make a Curcio because I was in a prayer group, Little Rock Scripture Study, and I saw these women who, like, like, example, if there was a question in the commentary, I'd, I'd only say the yes or no answers, mm -hmm. or if I saw it in the commentary, and these other women would be like. And I felt the Holy Spirit leading me. And I'm like, I never felt that. Uh, <laughs> I want what they have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they had made a Curcio. And Curcio is simply a, an encounter with God, yeah. a personal yeah. encounter with God. And I had, I went to a Curcio and I did have a personal encounter with God. Mm. It was just, really? it was exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's just all over it. Yeah. yeah. When you, you just felt, Kind of a, a deep connection in your heart it was oh present. yeah really oh i loved it and it was each talk builds on the talk before mm -hmm. and i just saw that building mm -hmm. and i'm like whoa what are they preparing me for and it was preparing me to become a disciple yeah, yeah. and um of course through the piety the study and the action i've done all three now since 1993. wow Gosh, Brenda, that's incredible. Because you've you've worked as a Curcio director at this point too, right? For yes, yes, I've also times. been a lay director. Wow. Yeah, coming that's... from the person that would only yeah. say the yes or no answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Little Rock Scripture yeah. Study, yeah. and then um, that's typical. I'm God. leading. A... That's oh, typical God. It's I know. Like, it, Mother Teresa often said, she said, God loves to use nothingness to show what He can do. <laughs> the, the, the last, least, and least fa favorite. Oh thing yeah. We do it often. That's what. If anything. If I say something profound, I'm like, that was good, because <laughs> I know where it's not coming from me. <laughs> what would you say, Brenda, to someone that um, that was that is now where you were, in the sense that they're they're floating, they are now, they're like, man, I you know I believe in God, but I you know whatever, um, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious, you know, um, I don't trust the organized religion. Um, and, you know, as long as I'm basically a good person and I go to Mass, you know, once or twice a year, whatever, um, what would you say to someone that is just kind of lazy about their faith? And this, or maybe it's not that they're lazy, maybe it's just that they're like, eh, you know. Like, how, what would you say about having that encounter? I don't know what I'd say to someone who's just making the baby steps back to the faith. Yeah. The first thing that pops to my mind is a silly old, try it, you'll like it type yeah, of statement. The other thing is, like me, when I was in that Bible study, when I was seeing Christ in those other women, oh, yeah. and I liked it, yeah. and I'd say, you know, get together with someone that you see Christ in, mm -hmm. and then why go it alone? Yeah. You know, I'm reminded of when you were talking about the bread, that we need mm -hmm. to be the elastic, and yeah. we need to be together. Um, a few weeks ago, I, I was just physically, emotionally, what's the third one? Physically, emotionally, mentally yeah. Yeah. exhausted and doing the, oh, God, where are you type of thing. Just pooped. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
so what did I do? I didn't wallow in it by myself. I sought out good Christian women. Mm. Um, women that sometimes they have come to me for advice, yeah. and then I'm going to them for advice because yeah. no one's got it. Yeah, right, No one's right. really and got we're it. We're making it up as we go. Yeah, so yeah. Um, they helped me through it. It mm. just, don't go through anything alone. Yeah. And then the sacraments. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I try to go to daily mass now. Yeah. Did you because, miss the Eucharist when you were away from the Eucharist? Um, no, that's how clueless I was. Yeah. yeah. And that's how much I wasn't taught mm -hmm. how important it is and food for yeah. the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, once I caught on, I, I go to daily mass. Yeah. Except when I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And sometimes when I can't, it's because I'm helping a daughter, I'm helping a friend. Well, what would that be if I'm like, hold it, I can't yeah, help right. you, yeah. i got to go to Mass. Yeah, sure, that's right. You know, that's they're the body of Christ. I have to go see yeah. Christ in them, and they see Christ with me, and then... Isn't that amazing how people need other people? Yes. Because I think, and I think it's like what you're talking about is, uh, I know you would never say this, but I think it, 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 um, it requires humility. Mm -hmm. Because if we reach out to someone and we say, um, I need your help, oh, yeah. that, that, that there's a premise there that I am humble enough to ask for that. It's a big mm -hmm. problem with men. Because men are like, <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm doing okay. I don't need to go to the doctor. I don't need to talk to somebody. You know, I don't need to go to church. Whatever my wife wants to do, you know. But we have to, it's humbling to do mm -hmm. that. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it reminds me of going to AA for the first time or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were, I'm Brenda, and I'm down and out right now. Yeah, yeah. And my friends lifted me up. I could just feel it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just in speaking it. Yeah. We can solve our own problems. Because yeah. sometimes a friend just goes, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And other times they can just zap you. Yeah. Like, get over it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was talking to a priest last night, and he was, uh, he was uh, he's recently getting moved mm -hmm. to a new assignment. Very happy to go. But um, he and I were talking about when, when priests get moved to a new mm -hmm. place. And it's funny because sometimes priests don't want to go to a new place. Mm -hmm. But as they go, you know, they're like, ugh. But then as they get there and they're there for like a couple of years, they never want to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, they often don't want to get moved. But then after they're there for a couple of years, they're like, they never want to leave. Yeah. And, and so sometimes what happens is then as we have problems too, we... We have to be humble enough to ask other people for help, mm -hmm. too, because we're all human. All of us are human. And, um, you know, I think that's a good point, Brenda. I mean, it, in how much we need other people. Oh, yes. That we're communal by nature, which mm -hmm. which is, it's kind of, sometimes we see this, I think, when we help the poor, right? And we see that in some ways we, we maybe help them to have something to eat, yeah. but then they really help us spiritually as well. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we have a deep sense of... Of, uh, that somehow we're being fed spiritually too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, recently, well, the past 10 years, I've been doing prison ministry. Mm. And, you know, we go in and we bring Jesus, you know, and we find out Jesus is already there. Yeah. And yeah. they minister to us. Yeah. And they have time in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole connotation yeah. of time because oh, they sure, have right? time and they yeah. have their allotted time yeah. that they're there for. What do you what what have you enjoyed the most about that? Um just putting a face on a prisoner mm -hmm. and um hearing their stories and seeing that Christ is there in the prison. Mm -hmm. It's again humbling. Yeah. And and it's good for them cuz some of them don't have family. Mm -hmm. If they're in Memphis, they might be from Chattanooga because mm -hmm. I go to the state facility. Wow. And it's sometimes I, I'm like a sister to them, mm. too. Yeah. And I'm able to uh, have a communion service there. I go twice a week. Other times we have a deacon and then we have a priest for mass. Mm -hmm. But for, So they're covered every month. Yeah. So they're getting weekly communion. Yeah. Yeah, it, isn't it interesting that um, when we have these points, I, I know when I used to go visit the prisons and I've been to visit the guys in death row um, I remember thinking that how easy this could be me oh yeah I mean any day I think you know there before the grace of God go I mm -hmm. and um, and it's 
and I'm sure you've seen this right, that sometimes the prisoners will say, um, they'll say, you know, it is here that I found Jesus. Oh, yeah. It's here that I found mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. and the importance of this or that person in my life, even though I can't see my wife, I can't see my child, I can't see my parents, mm -hmm. because I'm here and they're there and we live apart, and even on Christmas maybe we can't see each other, but it's here that I found Christ and it's here that I saw the importance of them out there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting, isn't the paradox, because you see then the importance sometimes in the prison of community. Oh, yeah. And the importance of community there when people need community. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they try to go it alone. Right, right. And then they find out it doesn't work. Can't happen. And then they build their own communities. Yeah. How do you, Brenda, how do you pray? When you pray, when you sit down to pray, or when you, just in your day, if you think, okay, it's time for me and me and this guy <laughs> up here to have this conversation, how does that happen? Well, I try to always remember to do morning prayers and night prayers, yeah. but a lot of times I forget, and then I get get on myself for that. So I mostly do like the Brother Lawrence thing, like just talk to God all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about find me a parking place yeah. kind of prayers, <laughs> and uh -huh. the oops prayers. You know, I try to do a ongoing examination of conscience, mm -hmm. like that was stupid. What did I just do? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm trying now to do the examine. I'm yeah. embracing that again. What is what is that? Like, if people don't know what that is, what is, what is that? The examine. It's at the end of the day, or during the day you can prepare yourself for it. But at the yeah. end of the day, you look over your day and what are you thankful for? What went well? What, what went well? Uh -huh. What pulled at your heartstrings, mm -hmm. your God strings, you know? Yeah. And how can you can improve on it? And all that desolation and consolation. consolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying yeah. that again. That's good and because I'm I liking think, it. Yeah, how long? How long? If, how long you been doing that? Oh, this time? Uh, this week? <laughs> <laughs> well, God has a sense yeah. of humor. Like I'll pick up something, mm -hmm. um, like the book by Father Gallagher, looking mm -hmm. at it again. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. with Timothy Gallagher, and yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Got, I always I have books all over my house. Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, again, I talked to God. I found that easy to believe. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to read this one now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm reading it now, so I'm like, okay, yeah. the timing's good. This looks good. Yeah. And maybe I'll do it this time. Well, and see, that, that's so good, Brenda, because like, I think when people, when especially at the end of the day when you're just like, oh. I know. <laughs> right? I remember when I, was, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, I used to hate going to bed, and my mother said, the day will come when this will be the best part of your whole day. And I said, that's never going to happen. Oh. And now I lay down to bed. I'm like, thank you, God, for my pillow. Thank you, Lord, for my pillow. But it's because it takes it takes some time mm -hmm. to, at the end of the day, to just sit down and say, yeah. okay, you know what? Yeah, I kind of lost my temper there. Yeah. Maybe I was snippy, mm -hmm. or maybe I was terse with that person, or maybe there was that one person that I could have reached out to more. Yeah. And I think for me, and I, and I don't know if how you feel there. I think sometimes it's harder for us to think. I did this well. So sometimes it's harder, it's it's maybe harder for us to accentuate what we've done well, yeah. or our talents, or the gifts that we've mm -hmm. been given, our mm -hmm. charisms, than it is the, the things we have to work on. But it's good to see the things that you're good at. Yeah. Because, I mean, now there's a whole way of looking that then maybe you should go into that as your career. Yeah, right. You know, so it's okay to look at what you do well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not feel guilty about doing and that. Don't feel guilty. Right. I mean, I think that's a, a level of humility. Yeah, absolutely. Is knowing what gifts God has given you. Mm -hmm. And use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't bury them. Like right. the whole talent mm -hmm. parable. Use yeah. them. Use them. Isn't that interesting? Because that, that's a very good point. Because when Jesus tells that story, mm -hmm. the the landowner, when he was getting, you know, saying, okay, well, now what have we, what have we done here? Uh -huh. He was actually really stern. He was really stern with the, the guy that didn't use his talents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he, he was very, very stern with it. And that guy. guy thought he was being wise. Right, like, I'm not going to lose right. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really true. Yeah. I, do you see that sometimes when you go to the prison? That people, like, is there, um, that sometimes maybe a sense of shame oh, with yeah. these people? And yeah. Oh, one lady told me she feels bad because it's our tax money that feeds her now, that houses her now. Mm -hmm. And she feels bad because she committed a crime. 
Now, sometimes they tell me they didn't commit the crime. Yeah. And sometimes they yeah. tell me they did. And yeah. we never ask what they've done. Yeah, sure. So for the most part, I don't know what, what the done. women, and it's women, I just go to a women's yeah. facility. But yeah, mm. she said she was sorry for committing her crime, that we bear the burden of her now. Mm. Wow. Wow. Isn't that incredible? And yet other ones will say they feel freer in prison than they did yeah, on the streets. Right. That's a common one. Yeah. And then you really see that fleshed out. And some of them may come from a neighborhood where drugs were very prevalent. Mm -hmm. And they may have gotten into the drug culture. Mm -hmm. And now they're freer in prison yeah. than they were on the street. Yeah. Do you, do you, um, do you pray with your spouse? We do at night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, I hope you don't mind me asking that question, but I think yeah. that, I think with young couples, you guys have been married for how long now? <laughs> 42 years. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> Spring chicken. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I mean, I just see this some, uh, so often working with, with couples before they're married, couples in the first five years of marriage, mm -hmm. couples 10, 20 years mm -hmm. in, how common it is that a lot of them just don't pray. Yeah. And together. And so I often say this to the people in, in my church, but um, I think men in particular, they're often comfortable praying alone. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable praying uh, with their spouse mm -hmm. in church. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable praying with other men, mm -hmm. but they're often not comfortable praying with their spouse outside of church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it comes down to turning TV off. You know, and saying, "Honey, sit down. Let's have let's sofa time." Yeah, let's have exactly one one place we pray is sofa time. Mm. The other time is when we're already about to go to bed. Mm. And um, and another way is just to pray for your loved ones. You yeah. just you recall their names and you, you pray for each person individually. Yeah. An image someone gave me. Um, she and her husband were ha they had a son that was very sick, and they talked to a priest. And the priest said, are y'all praying together? Mm. I'm like, no. He said, well, right now, you're praying, and you're praying. Yeah. But you need to both right. pray. That's and with right. that image, yeah. wow, to come together. Yeah. And then the whole triangle, if it's God, husband, and wife. Yeah, exactly. You know, you got to bring exactly. God into it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, and, and that's what I tell people. Oh. Salt and pepper. <laughs> I mean, these two go together, you know? And it's like... <laughs> And it's so funny because I'll tell them this and they'll say, okay, who's, who's salt, who's pepper? <laughs> <laughs> so you got to figure that one out. Yep. <laughs> well, it's like, isn't that incredible? Because it's like, there's, I, I just, it, it always strikes me because they always say the hardest things to learn in life are the least complicated. Oh. And um, so sometimes people can be, you know, they can have letters before their name letters after mm -hmm. after the name including priests you know mm -hmm. and so we can be doctor so-and-so father so-and-so whatever it doesn't mean we know what we're talking about mm -hmm. and what it means is that we we may be educated in one area yeah. but still ignoring this whole area that needs help mm -hmm. and so some people they they can be you know, have a seasoned resume yeah. um but and, and manage a Fortune 500 company, but have no idea how to communicate to their spouse yeah. or how to pray with their spouse. Mm -hmm. It'd be very, very threatening. You know, in the food world, we often used to say that um, you can have a, a chef who knows how to make beef Wellington and lobster thermidor, but <laughs> he doesn't know how to make a blueberry muffin <laughs> or pancake. Right, yeah. like everybody's grandmother knows how. Like to do it's okay, that's just one course. Yeah, but you've got other meals during the yeah, day. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right, so they can they can make these complicated things, but something so simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they completely miss. Well, you reminded me, like I wish common sense had mm -hmm. letters behind it. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Sometimes that's what you need is just common yeah. sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and we're all guilty of it. I mean, I yeah. think you know, I think sometimes for each one of us, we'll start out strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and then after a couple years in, we we slowly pick up bad <laughs> habits, right? Of like, um, rather than spending time playing ball with my my kid, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow, tomorrow, whatever. And so just to, to 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 really just spend time. That's why I think honestly, a meal is so important. It's to be able to everything we are as a Catholic goes back to a meal too. You yeah, know? you got to turn off the devices. Yeah, yeah, and that's dangerous. <laughs> you take your life into your hands too, and you ask people to do that. 
and share the day. I mean, that's mm -hmm. especially if you've done a blessing before you eat. You're yeah. you're in prayer. Yeah. You're, you're surrounded. Yeah. 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 Did you guys have meals when you were growing up? To, did you guys share meals? Oh up? yeah. I tell people when you work with the nuns, there's only one, two words to remember. Yes, sister. <laughs> Those sisters are almost spooky. I went one time and brought corn. And then I went three years later, and they were like, you brought corn the last time. And I said, no, I didn't. And I remembered. I did. They remembered I brought corn. Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, yeah like, I hold them to a different level awesome. <laughs> after the corn story. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what happened? Did did you have a Eucharist story when you went down there? Yes, I. Um, my church we bring breakfast every Saturday, and so I'm on that rotation. So I go down to have breakfast and to bring breakfast. You get with another couple, and. You went down to Mother Teresa's. Mother Teresa's, Missionaries of Charity, downtown Memphis. And I always forget how to go there, so, you know, I put the GPS on my phone. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's well, like Keel Street, 7th yeah. Street. So, we get there, and of course, we arrive at 7.05 for 7 o'clock Mass. Oh. And, um, well, you're a good Catholic then. Yes, there you go. <laughs> can sit in the back. <laughs> so, I get there, and then I'm like, where do they have the daily mass? It's in the chapel, but where is the chapel? And I'm late. Yet, I'm with my husband, and I'm like, let's just go look for it. So we go, and we I look through the, the window. I'm like, yeah, it's in the Oh, yeah. So we go in. You'd never been there before. I'd been there before, yeah, but I'd forgotten. I forgot how to get into the chapel. So finally, we get into the chapel. We sit down. Uh, the first part of the story is we notice everyone has their shoes off. And I'm like, oh, how sweet. You know, the homeless women are not wearing their shoes. Mm -hmm. Clearly not getting it, that out of reverence they've taken their shoes oh, yeah. off, just like the missionaries <laughs> at charity. <laughs> um, and then it comes to communion time. Well, first of all, I mean, the Mass is just so beautiful mm -hmm. with the missionaries mm -hmm. at charity. Oh, my God, and the statue, and the I thirst. Yeah. You know, the yeah. whole thing, I'm there. So I go up to receive communion as I'm receiving communion, my phone says, you have arrived at your destination. <laughs> I am mortified. And I'm like, so I try to put it on mute. I'm like, that it's is on awesome. mute. <laughs> the GPS part doesn't shut up on mute. That you have arrived at your destination. Awesome. I'm like eye contact. I put a little smirk on my face. I mean, I'm receiving communion. I've got a smirk what on my face. What did the priest say? He did, too. He just kind of had a little smirk, too. <laughs> I mean, it's real life. It's real life. <laughs> so I receive yeah. communion reverently, go back to my place, and then after Mass, we go into the, uh, the kitchen, and then we serve the women the breakfast we've bought, brought. And the house mother comes up to me and says, that was amazing timing that your phone said you have arrived at your destination <laughs> as you're receiving communion. Right, note to self. I didn't get Beautiful. it. Yeah. She got it. That's awesome. I mean, did that's... Nun, did none say anything to you? They probably didn't even notice. <laughs> They're probably praying so hard they didn't even hear it. <laughs> yeah. That is so great. I know. Well, it is true. Because I think that's, it's a good, because you brought up, you brought up the, um, the, the, the words I thirst mm -hmm. right and and it's it's so important because it's like of course they've got that in all their chapels all oh. over the world and it's like it's so indicative of I think the culture as a, as a whole people say mm -hmm. I'm not being fed I'm thirsting I need something yeah. and to then have that experience it's yeah. kind of the answer to the I thirst in some ways right you've arrived yeah. at your destination mm -hmm. you know that you're being spiritually fed in more mm -hmm. ways than one I mean, that's, that's really neat. Wow. And the, I would have missed it. Again, yeah. that's why you need other people. Yeah, 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 seriously. The house mother saw that. Yeah. There's a priest friend of mine who says that the, the definition of despair, the, the opposite of despair, of hope, is despair. And the definition of despair is to not have others. Mm -hmm. to, 
be in total solitude. And I think that's people that struggle with addictions, we see this, right, is it, it cocoons one into themselves. Yeah. And so they, they just live within themselves apart mm -hmm. from other people. Mm -hmm. Whereas when people have really healthy relationships, they're happy. Yeah. They're happy. Mm -hmm. Even introverts. Because I think sometimes when people think of, of someone that has healthy relationships, or they think, well, they're just extroverted, right, the life right. of the party. But that's mm -hmm. not always the case. I mean, of course, there's many introverts who have really solid. Oh, yeah. Good they just need time alone to yeah. be refed. Yeah. Because that's how they get refilled. Yeah. But they need people, too. Yeah. 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 And especially, right, I'm sure you see this as a parent, mm -hmm. like when you're raising your kids, how their personalities are totally different. Oh, yeah. Like different flowers. Yeah. And they're all beautiful and they all smell good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it, I, always, I, always, I, I always think it's really neat to see these people when they have the, they have this, they don't have the connections with other people mm -hmm. and then they reconnect mm -hmm. and have a, a real sense of hope. And um, it's neat to see that kind of getting bigger in them. Yeah. As time goes on, they're, they're just happier. And people mm -hmm. will tell them, they'll say, you look happier. You're mm -hmm. a happier person. What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. thing. And so, yeah. That's the nature of all those self-help types of groups, yeah. too. Also, if you're struggling with something, find someone who has struggled with that. Yeah. I try to help women who have suffered miscarriages mm -hmm. because I have empathy. And, and you know, there's, there's an extra ingredient when I talk to them and they talk with me. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not a sisterhood you want to belong to. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that beautiful, mm -hmm. Brenda? Mm -hmm. Because, it, I, I mean, what makes me think of is like soldiers in battle. Mm -hmm. That after, when they uh, share that, and then after they, they don't see each other for years, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they come together and they're like, like brothers. Like yeah, they, like, time hadn't stopped. Uh, yeah. Like they're yeah. always that connected. To Just like people. high school friends. Yeah. Oh man, that's so true. <laughs> high school so, reunions. Yeah. 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 Well, praise God. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, that's a blessing to have you. Enjoyed and, it. Mm. Mm -hmm.